It's Wednesday, October the 5th of 2016. We're in the middle of the week already, so this week's just flying by just like the ones that were before it. And uh, we had an opportunity to talk about a lot of things so far on these devotionals, and uh, we have focused on sin. And since we know what the problem is, the next logical step is how do we deal with it? What is the creative way of dealing with sin? And when you say the word creative, why not talk about the creation story? And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the creation story to try to help you understand uh, what steps you can take and what does God make available to you to help you deal with sin and help you solve problems or overcome problems that you're experiencing in your life. So let's look at day one of the account of creation as found in the book of Genesis chapter one. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says here, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So the very first sentence of the Bible tells us straightforward that God is the source of everything. So if he's the source of everything and the creator of everything, then he's got the answers. He's got the authority. There's nothing that exists that he doesn't know about. So we have an awesome, awesome resource with God. He goes on to say here, the earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. That's the first day of creation. And this is where... We normally find ourselves when we're aware that we're in a sinful situation or we've made a mistake or we have a problem that we need to overcome. So, and then notice it says here, the earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep water. Sometimes uh, sin can really distort our lives and make us feel formless. Uh, it can also steal from us and rob from us. Uh, our emotions and our joy so it makes us feel empty and it definitely makes us feel like we're walking in darkness so the way God found the earth on the first day of creation is the way he normally finds us when we're caught up in sin or if we have a problem that we're we're trying to overcome in our life so what does he do well it says here that the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters that means God is always nearby There's never a time when God is not close to us. So when we find ourselves feeling formless and distorted and empty and lost in darkness, we have to understand that even in those times, the Spirit of God is hovering close by. And if we turn to him and say, God, I have a problem. Can you help me out? That's when God says, let there be light. And there will be light if you choose to allow it to shine into your life. So you have to look to God and say, God, I have a problem. I'm in darkness. I can't find my way. Can you shed a little light on this situation? And God's always ready to say, yes, let there be light. And there was light and God saw that the light was good. So God's going to work light into our lives for our own good. Uh, and it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, For God who said, Let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so that we can know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. You see, God is just waiting for us to realize we don't need to be stumbling around in the darkness. We need to look to Jesus to find the answers that we're seeking. We need to look to Jesus to find our way out of the darkness. And that is the light and the darkness that God is talking about. Jesus told us, and this is from John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have light that leads to life. And when we're in a problem situation, or if we find ourselves caught up in sin for any reason, Aren't we at that point looking for something better in life? Aren't we looking for a better way to go in life? Well, that's what Jesus wants us, wants us to do. When, he, when we look to him, 
We have to acknowledge that He is the light of the world and that we don't have to walk around in darkness. That we don't have to be stumbling and fumbling and trying to find our way like this. I mean, we look ridiculous when we do stuff like this, but yet people choose to walk through life that way. they rather try to find their own way instead of turning on the light. Did you ever know someone to go into a dark room to grab something and they for some reason, don't want to turn the light on? You know what ends up happening normally in those circumstances. They'll fall over something and get hurt. And see, that's the thing. If we keep walking and stumbling in darkness without turning on the light and without looking to Jesus, we are setting ourselves up for a fall. And if we fall, we can set ourselves up to be hurt. And that's never a good thing. And God doesn't want that to happen to us. So Jesus tells us, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in the darkness. And then if we look at John chapter 1, the word, which is Jesus, gave life to everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. So we have to place our trust in the Jesus that he's going to light the way before us and show us a way out of our problems. Show us a way out of sin. Show us a way towards resolution of the problem. Show us a way to fix things instead of perpetuating what's broken. And we have to trust him to do that. You know, we've all heard that statement, the light at the end of the tunnel. The light at the end of the tunnel when you're caught up in the darkness is Jesus Christ. That's why we need to keep following that light because that's what's going to lead us out of the darkness and into the light. And we can trust this light. Why? Because nothing in this world can extinguish it. It's always going to be shining regardless of our situation. It says, the people who sat or walked in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who lived in a land where death cast its shadow, a light has shined. That is the prophecy that was spoken of Christ when he came into the world, when he was born into the world, that the Messiah has come into the world, the Savior has come into the world, and he wants to save us from our sins. He wants to save us from our problems. So the first thing we need to do when we find ourselves in a problematic situation is look to the light so that we can be guided out of the darkness and that we can find our way through the darkness. You know, when Israel left Egypt and was wandering around in the wilderness, heading to the promised land, God led them. By day, he was a pillar of cloud showing them the way to go that would lead to the promised land so that they knew the path, so they weren't just wandering aimlessly through the wilderness. And at night, it says that he was a pillar of fire so that they could find their way through the darkness. He lit up the path before them so that they could find their way to the promised land. Now, if he's going to do that for an entire nation, will he not do the same for you? You have to trust him because he knows the way and knows where the solution lies to your problem. So the bottom line is, what are you doing stumbling around in the darkness? Look to the light. That's step one. Find the light. Find that light at the end of the tunnel and follow it so you can get on the path of making things right. That's step one. We'll talk about step two tomorrow. I hope everyone has a blessed day. And remember, nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ.